Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, what happened is that when we were talking about airships to people, when we were trying to pitch airships to people, a thought suddenly came to our mind that all our knowledge is second hand. We have no personal experience. So, the credibility of a person is always at question when you make statements without having any personal experience. Now, as an academician in IIT Bombay, I really cannot think of making man carrying airships. 1500 kg payload or even 100 kg payload. What we can do here is to do design fabrication and flying of remotely controlled airships. So, that is what we started with and I uh, will <clears throat> show you a small trailer of uh, some of our airship flights that will give you an idea. This was the first airship which was demonstrated in Texas in 2002. This year, January, this month, January year 2002, we flew it in Jimkhana ground and you can see the kind of control we were able to achieve. Next year, we were invited by the Indian government to the Indian Science Congress, which took place again this year in January, first week of January, and we flew this airship in Bangalore. Uh, but what you are seeing are the full-scale dress rehearsal in Pune. Then we were contracted by a DRDO uh, laboratory called as Snow and Avalanche Study Establishment or SASE, which uh, wanted us to show airships can be used for avalanche monitoring, snow cover studies. So for that, this airship was designed and it was demonstrated as part of uh, an international seminar on snow and avalanches in uh, April 2009. This airship is the one which is flying in our VNCC fire uh, designed by a VTech student or a dual degree student as part of his VDP couple of years ago and this is an autonomous airship about which I will talk in much more detail very soon. Okay, then we also make these small airships for demonstration purposes. We go to many institutes and uh, we showcase this technology to excite the students so that they can also think of making these systems and so far I have a very clean record that wherever I have gone and given a presentation like this, immediately the students say we want to make something and they start a project, they try to get funding from here and there and many of them have succeeded also as I will focus to you a few of them. This is a field deployment of a wing and this particular uh, device was tested uh, a couple of years ago in the Jimkhana ground, uh, in case there is an aerostat and in case there is a loss of tether, loss of tension, we have a free flying balloon and we are near the airport. So this system automatically brings it down uh, to recover the payload safely. And this video is that of an aerostat that was uh, installed at NIT Hamirpur last year in the month of April. As a, an, as a device which can be used by the college, as you can see, for aerial surveillance of their campus. Okay, so these are uh, some of the projects that we have been doing, and uh, in this presentation, we will look at some of these projects very closely. So here is the first one, the remotely controlled airship uh, designed by the students of the 2002 Passing Janta. Uh, this was part of the aircraft design laboratory course, a course which is also going on right now, AE417. Uh, that year in AE417, since I was completely <laughs> occupied with airship and airship research, uh, I requested the students, why don't they work with me in developing an airship? So, uh, there were two teams and then one team finally was able to give a very detailed and a, uh, correctly sized design. So that team along with the, some project engineers, they made this airship and as I said, uh, it was flown in Jimkhana ground. We had 
basically flights on four days. Uh, on all the days of TechFest, we have flown this airship in 2002. Plus, we have done some, several other trial flights subsequently. So, this airship can lift just one kilogram of payload. But the dimension is just under 5 meters in length. So, just understand that 5 meters of dimension is needed to lift 1 kilogram of weight. And uh, the envelope was actually fabricated by an agency in Wapi because at that point of time, we did not have any facility in the department to fabricate the, or join these envelopes. So, it was sent to uh, a company, our students went to a company in Wapi over 3 or 4 weekends and taking help from them, from them they fabricated this particular envelope. Uh, and similarly, I invited a friend of mine to come and fly this airship for us because none of us at that time knew how to fly an airship. And this person is a very experienced uh, flyer. Uh, so, therefore, we requested him to join our activities and uh, he obliged and since then he has been working with us on all our airship projects. Most of the projects that we have done, we have had the participation of this gentleman. So, uh, I have already shown you the video, but do you want to see it again? Okay, I will show you, this is a slightly noisy video. I am, I am putting the noise off, actually it is very noisy. The sound that you hear is uh, because of the engine. Now, Shubham, can you just connect this downstairs? There is one electrical point there, just below. Now, it is so noisy because uh, we had to remove the radiator of the engine for uh, weight control. We were very critical on weight and also we were not sure whether it will be cooled properly. So, we wanted to have air cooling by the propeller. Okay. Here you can see a horizontal turn. Now, uh, you will notice that the nose of the airship has got some uh, reddish kind of a bag which is hanging. So, can someone guess what this reddish bag is for? What does it contain? Yes, this is for central gravity control. This, this particular term is called as ballasting. Okay. So, we are using stones for ballasting. We picked up some small pebbles in Jimkhana ground and put them in this red colored bag and used it for balancing our airship. Because we need a very fine control on the on the center of gravity. Now, there is a maneuver called as a touch and go maneuver. It demonstrates the amount of control you have on a flying system in which you bring it to land as if it is going to land and then you take off. So, in, in fixed aircraft, uh, the touch and go maneuver is uh, an indication of the amount of control a pilot has on, on the um, system. And then, there is one problem which always we face, engine cut. <laughs> so, basically, uh, intentionally the engine was cut during the flight. And as I have told you in the first lecture, we fly airships actually heavier than air. So, because it is really heavier than air, it comes down because of gravity. Uh, and uh, that is taken care by the power plant. Okay. This one is uh, this one is uh, slightly in large version. So there is a long, uh, nice documentary film which was made. So I'll put that on. It is self-explanatory. I don't have to speak. So we rechristened LTA as Let's Think Airships, and this documentary film was made by uh, a person who just passed out from IDC in IIT Bombay. 
So this was his first film. You will see me in a very young, young state. PADD or PAD that you see on the envelope behind me is an acronym for Program for Airship Design and Development, a program that we have launched in IIT Bombay Aerospace Engineering Department about a year and a half ago. Airship is a lighter than air vehicle, that means or more or less as light as air because the envelope or the huge body which it has is filled with lighter than air gas which is helium in most of the cases. Right now this is uh, my ex-colleague uh, Professor Gokte who is no more, he passed away in 2010. Uh, he was the consultant whom we had hired uh, as part of our team and he worked with us for nearly a year. And uh, a large part of technical work in this project was actually done by Professor Gokte. And thereby it is so light that if there is a slight force, upward force, it will go up. And if the weight is slightly more, it will come down. And because of this, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, we got together and we conceived a small remotely controlled airship which we fondly refer to as our micro airship. This particular airship is about 15 feet or uh, just under 5 meters length. The diameter is 1.65 uh, meters for the envelope and uh, it can lift a payload of approximately around 1 kilogram. What you see behind me is a modified version of the micro airship which we call now as a mini airship and this mini airship today we have just checked out it can lift something about 3 kilograms of payload An airship does not require a large runway. It consumes uh, much lower fuel compared to an aeroplane, but at low speeds. The mandate uh, for this vehicle is to be able to carry a video downlink so that we can demonstrate to people the capability of airship as a medium for surveillance and aerial observation duties along with having a huge size of the envelope which we can use to promote or advertise a product. We are flying now in Bangalore, in Science Congress. For commercialization where you can use in the ad purpose, or for surveillance purpose, or for military purpose, or for carrying different loads.
just to save time, uh, <coughs> we can go ahead. Now, uh, airships require a lot of support systems. One of them is a mooring mast, so that when you are not flying the airship but working on it or doing some attachments, we need to attach it to the masts and keep it. So, you can see there was a, a student who came from uh, a college in Nagpur who did uh, his uh, BTEC project on the design of a mooring mast for the airship. And uh, you will see uh, a, a CAD model of uh, the design as well as some kind of a engineering drawing. But when we actually asked a student to fabricate, because he joined as a project engineer after he did his uh, BTEC project, he realized that all these fancy designs do not work in practice and it was too complicated. You can see it is such a complicated system. So, ultimately what he made was just a single member in the center and that is what you can see in the picture below. So, he did make a mast, but it was much simpler than his own complicated design as part of. So, that is why in theory we can do many things. But when you actually bring it to real life, you have to simplify things. Uh, and simple things work much better. This was a very useful mast. This picture that you see on the bottom has been shot in uh, Park College of Engineering in Coimbatore, which started an aerospace engineering department. And uh, they had one technical festival like TechFest called Park Vaimanik Darshan. So, we were invited to go and fly our airship there. So, our entire team went from here. Uh, to Park College for this flight. Okay. Uh, I also mentioned to you about uh, the airship that was designed for uh, snow and avalanche study establishment. Now, this was also a BTEC project. Interestingly, the student working on this project was uh, actually looking at an aerostat to start with. But then um, we got a request from the director of this laboratory saying that there is an international science congress, there is an international uh, symposium on snow and avalanches and can you modify this design. So, overnight the student converted from aerostat to airship very happily because aerostats are little bit boring, they are stationary. Uh, technically, they are very great challenge, but they are not very exciting. Airships are very exciting because they move around, they fly, they come down, they go up. So, you are very happy and uh, <coughs> Ultimately, on YouTube, he has put a video saying my BTEC project. Okay. So, have a look, just search for these words, my BTEC project, and you will find this particular video there uh, put up by one of your seniors. So, the challenge here was to design a system within a month, including transportation of the system to Manali, and then putting it together and flying it. So, on 2nd of March, we got the final approval, and on 7th or on 4th of Ma April, we had to do the demonstration. But on 4th April, we did not get to fly because the hangar was occupied by helicopters or VVIPs. We flew on 7th of April. Okay. So, from 2nd March to 7th April is just one month or one month and five days. During this time, we designed, fabricated, transported it to Manali. We all went to Manali, put it together, tested it there. It has become a case study. And at many places, I have been invited to give an inspirational talk on you know, from concept to reality in less than a month or something like that. So, very interesting case study. At some point of time, I can give you that case study in a story form. It is a story in pictures, but for you, what is important is to know some of the interesting features of this airship. So, uh, the altitude at which it is flying is actually quite high for airships. So, that itself is uh, no mean achievement. Now, we were not very sure whether electrical motors will work in this kind of uh, environment when it is Sometimes it may snow, sometimes it may be raining. So, we stuck to IC engines, which are much more reliable and they have much better uh, power to weight ratio. But our concern was the ability of an IC engine to develop enough power at this altitude. So, some interesting studies were done to calculate the power available at these altitudes. And uh, interestingly, this was built in our laboratory. The envelope was built in our laboratory and uh, taken to Manali. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'll just uh, try to show you some of the. Yeah, this is a very beautiful segment of the picture which shows the airship majestically undergoing a you know 360 degree turn while flying in the valley of Manali. And uh, during the demonstration, there was 
on this airship we have fitted a very special camera called as a ip camera you know what's an ip camera it's a camera that can talk to an ip address so my laptop has the ip address this camera was recording images still images at a particular frequency approximately 3 per second these images were recorded on board they were encrypted then there was a video downlink they were communicated downstairs my laptop was receiving them then there was a encryption decryption software and then there was a software which will show them in a sequence to show a pseudo video all this was done because it is drdo it's a defense application there could be a situation when the airship goes into a territory where you don't want it to go then you don't want to have data to go there so nothing is stored on board everything is recorded in real time transmitted and then decoded so as so a let's see let's see what uh, what the onboard camera records now as you will see on top of the screen probably if you can read these are a series of jpg images which are numbered sequentially so we are now seeing 480 481 482 483 jpg so this whole flight is around 650 jpg images and uh, i can accelerate them like this so you can see is fast forward so it just shows you this is the uh, the campus of uh, sase manali by air <coughs> so using an open source software called irfan view we are able to stitch them together into some kind of a pseudo video my question to you is that there are several good video cameras available with us and we have installed them and tested them before so why do you think there was a need to go for taking still images why couldn't we do video recording in what way takes less memory yes for a given flight sequence you are right it takes less memory but there is one more reason what else could be the reason one is it is easy to decrypt and uh, downlink but other than that what could be the reason yes that's also one reason there could be a limit on the data so each image can be transmitted sequentially so there could be there could be a limit and there was a limit there was a limit in this case but uh, our main reason was please remember this is meant for snow scientists so what are they interested in not the beauty they are interested in still images of specific areas which they want to process in their softwares if they want to do snow cover evaluation they want you to fly today after 3 months and they'll compare the two videos so for comparison purposes you have to grab an image from a video and now that reduces the image quality so each of this is a high quality still image so what we did is we looked at the customer's requirements and conceived a system suitable to the customer rather than telling the customer we have an airship we have a camera please use it we said no we'll give you something now this airship also flies in rain it also flies in mild snow it has been made completely waterproof okay and i'll show you some videos it also flies we can also fly during night by using a very interesting system but about that something else this is just a picture now looking at this airship i want you to tell me two things whether it is climbing or descending or whether it is moving turning towards the left that is port side or towards the right or the starboard side you have to look at the picture and then come to a conclusion and raise your hands raise your hands so that i get to choose there is already one person whose hand is up but i'll not give him a chance because he has already taken part in the discussion anybody else would like to raise your hand is it yes sandeep climbing or descending why do you say it's climbing correct elevator la pitch stop so the air hitting the elevator will move elevator down therefore nose will go up what about uh, turning flight or straight flight is it a port turn or a starboard turn yeah now you think it's a straight flight but actually the angle of the photograph is such that the deflection of the vertical surface is a bit towards the left as you see 
uh, if you see very carefully, you will find there is a slight deflection towards the left. So it is turning actually towards the left. Because when elevators go left, the node also goes left. So it is it's, it's, it's in a climb and a very shallow turn. Yes. You are right, but if the pitch up is in, if you have, in this particular case, we normally approach, see in an aircraft you approach with an angle of attack during the landing because you would like to have high drag. In airships, we do not come at an angle of attack, we come at a horizontal, uh, because we are not using dynamic lift at all. So if you see an angle of attack in an airship, chances are it is climbing. 